heading out of Plymouth uh, in the morning for the day of days. Over the last few years, we've had aggregations of one of the world's oceanic super predators, and that's bluefin tuna. Back in the day, there was a bluefin tuna fishery here, and then they're all fished out, and rather fantastically, they're back. Scientists are now tagging them, monitoring their movements, and figuring out why this extraordinary animal has appeared off our coast and how to keep it safe and make sure the numbers stay up. We have had no information on bluefin tuna since the 50s when they left. So we are starting from scratch. We need to know how many there are, where they're going, what they're feeding on, what they're doing, what, why they're here, how long are they in our waters. All of this stuff helps us to build up a scientific basis of what the population is doing in our waters. We want these fish here for, forever. So normally the fishermen are putting out the what we call foy tags, forgetter tags, they're just a regular um, dart tag. These are um, satellite tags, so these are going out for 90 days and they'll pop off. It's like a little scientist hanging on to it, measuring water temperature, depth, speed, acceleration, all this sort of really important stuff to understand these animals more. So bluefin are, are one of the most explosive predators in the marine environment and that manifests itself with activity on the surface. So you'll see a splash or you see an explosion of water as they drive bait fish to the surface, which is the hunting activity of bluefin. So we're closing in on it right now, lines are going out the back and hopefully we'll get uh, uh, stuck into a bluefin. The Atlantic bluefin tuna can weigh as much as two grizzly bears and can accelerate three times as faster than a Formula One racing car. A single bluefin tuna has previously sold for $1.7 million. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Roger. Okay. So the kit's quite heavy duty, and the reason for that is great minimal stress for the tuna. Think of tuna as kind of animals that can accelerate the sprinters, but this animal's shown phenomenal endurance as well. And of course, they range vast distances over the ocean as well. So that ability to keep going for a long time is phenomenal. It's only been on sort of 10 minutes or so, and that's good because you're trying to minimise the stress to it, get it tagged and get it away as quickly as possible. You can see it now, you can see it just there, and hopefully it'll be kind of worn out enough to come quietly to the side of the boat. side of the boat and what the scientists are doing now they're doing a visual assessment they're assessing its length and measuring it and they're going to put a tag in but then the fish is held at the side of the boat for a while they're allowing it to recover and then they'll let it go so it's a quick and very urgent process that's happening at the moment for the welfare of the animal there's a tag going in And it's been an unbelievable day already. We're surrounded by feeding activity and I think we've caught five so far today. And although you could describe this as sport fishing, there's this great sort of higher purpose. Mark. Well, this is, we know so little about these creatures and we're involved in the scientific research program where we're tagging the fish and obviously uh, we're doing stock assessments, we're doing all sorts of bits of these. But at the same time, we're actually giving people the opportunity through chartering to actually see this for themselves and actually catch these wonderful fish. So it's science and obviously social economic at its best. We're turning for home now and uh, it's been the most remarkable day. It'd be an extraordinary day anywhere on earth. 
this number of large oceanic predators in one area. But the really interesting thing here is the response of local skippers and local organizations to the presence of these bluefin. It hasn't been to rush out and try and catch as many as possible. It's been to work with local uh, conservation groups and uh, scientific groups and charities and say, okay, how can we all work together to tag these animals and make sure they're here, not for next year and the year after, but for decades and centuries ahead as a really precious natural resource off the coast of the UK. So it's been a wonderful day on so many levels.